Hello and welcome to the Bearded Math Man's YouTube channel. Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about graphs. What a graph is, how to graph, how to read a graph, all that kind of stuff. Ready? Let's get to it. So the big idea here, right? Like the, the crowning achievement of your <laughs> mathematical understanding to this point needs to be that a graph is a picture of all the answers. And a solution to an equation is just one of those answers. So if you have a single ordered pair on a graph, that is going to be an answer, an x and a y, that is a solution to an equation. Now, if you're dealing with a linear equation, they're called linear because they make straight lines, then all of the solutions to that equation form a straight line, and every single spot, every point on that line is going to be an answer to that equation. And the reason that we graph is because what we're doing is we're drawing a picture of all of the possible answers. We could never write them all. It's not like we're solving x plus 3 equals 7, so x would equal 4. There's no reason to graph that. We just have one answer. But if you have like y equals 3x minus 7, well, then there's infinitely many solutions. And drawing a picture can offer, offer us some insight into the nature of the equation. So that's why we graph. Now, when you have a graph, every single point is a solution to some equation. Every point on the line will be a solution to a linear equation, and any point that's not on the line, not a solution, right? So all of these points right here are solutions, and this point right here is not a solution, and it's not because it's not on the line. Every single point on the line is an answer to the equation, and any point not on the line, not a solution to the equation. So let's go ahead and see how to graph something like this, right? Now, since a graph is a picture of all the solutions and we want to graph x plus y equals three, what we need to do is we need to find some solutions. So what about if x equals one and y equals two? Like this right here, one comma two. You know how I got that? Well, I just thought about it. I just picked a number for x. I said, well, what would happen if x was one? So I put a one right here, and then I just read it. One plus what equals three? Well, one plus two is three. So if x is one, then y is two, right? And so, well, what if x was, was zero? What would y be? Did you get three? Right, zero comma three. So zero comma three is also a solution, and that's actually enough information to make a line. However, you need three points because if all three points are collinear, that means if they all line up and form a line, a straight line, then for sure you got it right. So if x was three, y would be zero. That's another solution right there. Boom, see? All you got to do, connect the dots and you're done. Every point on this line will be an answer. Every point on this line will be a solution to this equation right here. So like, for example, this point right here, this is negative two comma five. Well, negative two plus five is three. That is a solution to the equation. Every single point on the line is a, is a solution and any point not is not. That's how you do it right there. So as we said, this point right here, negative two comma five is a solution. It's a point on the line. Negative two is X. 5 is y, negative 2 plus 5 is 3. A solution is a value that makes the statement true, and we're done. So that is a good answer right there. Now, if there's a point that's not on the line, then it is not a solution. So for example, this point right here, 5 comma 4, right? That is obviously not on the line. 5 is x, 4 is y, 5 plus 4 is 9. That's not 3. This is not a value or a set of values that makes this equation true. That's why this is not a solution. And we didn't even need to plug it in. We could just see that it's not on the line. Therefore, it's not a solution, right? Now, if you know the shape of a graph, well, all you need to know is a few points and you can figure out what the graph looks like. So we're going to be talking mostly about linear equations, right? And so these are three examples of linear equations. So to make a graph, all you got to do is come up with three coordinates. Sometimes it's really easy, like y equals x. This is so easy that students almost sometimes mess it up. They think it's a trick. This says that whatever number y is, x is the same. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, three answers. All you got to do is plot those three points, connect the dots, and you're done. Now, there's a little bit of a more organized way to approach this, and that's with a T-chart. 
A T-chart helps you organize your work so you're not just doing it in your head. That way, if you do make a mistake, you can come back and trace it. So let's say we're going to graph y equals 3x minus 2, right? A T-chart would look like this. We just make a, a large T on the left will be our input values of x. X is independent, right? And Y will be dependent. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this number, negative 2. We're going to plug it in for X. We're going to do the arithmetic and then see what Y equals. So 3 times negative 2 minus 2. Hmm, let's see. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 2. Well, that's negative 8. And we're going to go ahead and continue that for all of these values. And we just take our numbers, what we get, we plug them right there in for y. And so what we have is we actually have ordered pairs right here. We have negative 2, negative 8, 0, negative 2, 1, 1, 5, 13, and 7, 19. So a t-chart, really useful. And it's useful because it gives you a way to track your mistakes. So if you plot these points and one of them doesn't line up, you can check your work and see where your mistake was, and that will give you confidence. When you find a mistake, it gives you confidence that you are now correct. So, to make a graph from a t-chart, all we have to do is plot all of those points, connect the dots, we're done, right? Now, let's go ahead and check a random point on the graph. So like 1.8 and 3.4. That was not something we found in the t-chart. This should be a solution because it's on the graph. And that's one of the big ideas for this, this video is that every point on our line is a solution to our equation. So 1.8, 3.4. So if I plug in 1.8 for x and I plug in 3.4 for y, so it's going to be 3.4 equals 3 times, and I plugged in 1.8 minus 2. So 3 times 1.8 is 5.4. 5.4 minus 2 is 3.4. This is an ordered pair that is a solution to this equation, y equals 3x minus 2. And we see that it is on the line. Whereas this point right here, 2, 7, is not a solution. Because if you plug in 7 for y, 2 for x, you get 7 equals 6 minus 2. Well, I do believe 6 minus 2 is 4. That's not the same as 7. It's false. It doesn't work. You see? Now, there's another way of writing a t-chart that maybe is a little better. Because when you do a t-chart, you have your x column, you have your y column. It's super quick and easy. And for something like this, maybe it's appropriate because you can do most of this in your head, right? But there's another way to organize the information. It looks kind of like an H. So instead of having two columns, you have three columns. So you have your x, which is your inputs. You have your y equals your equation right here. And you do all your work in this middle column. And then in the right-hand column, you go ahead and write your ordered pairs. When the equations get a little more complicated, this is maybe a preferable way because if you have to find your mistake, it's not on scratch work like on the side over here. It's going to be right here in the middle. So with a teak chart, you can write all of your x values all at once. Just write them down, do the scratch work, you write your y values. When you do one of these charts, it's best to do one number, do your work, write your coordinate, and then do your next point. Because you're going to be doing all your work right here in the middle. This was a pretty simple example, so we didn't have much work to show, but that's how you do it. Now, one piece of advice. It's always a really great idea if you use x equals 0 in your t-chart. The reason why, x equals 0 gives you a y-intercept. And that's one of the key points that you're going to be finding anyway. And maybe even better, more enticing, it's really easy to do math with 0. When you plug in 0, this whole thing, 3 times 0, this is just 0. So you're left with y equals negative 2. Easy as pie. Now, what if we had something like this? 4x minus 2y equals 8. Well, before you are going to use a t-chart, you might want to use inverse operations to solve for y. That means we want to get y by itself, right? To get y by itself, we're just going to use inverse operations. We're going to subtract 4x from both sides. And then we're going to divide everything by negative 2. So when I divide negative 4 by negative 2, I get 2. When I divide 8 by negative 2, I get negative 4. Now we have y by itself, so it's super easy to plug into your t-chart. So you plug it in, boom, you're done. Now, last thing here. What if you had something like this? y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. Well, it's kind of hard to do. Um, it's kind of hard to do math with fractions. People often avoid it. Well, if you use 0 
it's really easy, right? So if you plug in zero, this is just zero. Two thirds times zero is zero. So y equals negative one. And then if you pick some other numbers that will reduce. So like you pick three and maybe negative three or six and nine, things like that. Well, two thirds will always reduce. So it's going to be really, really easy. So if we do three and negative three, well, do you see two thirds times three is just two? Because the three is reduced, two minus one is one. And it's super, super, super easy. So what you want to do, if you have a coefficient of x, that's the number in front of x, it's a fraction, you're going to use zero in your t-chart. And then you're going to use values for x that will reduce with this denominator. And it's easy. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. A graph is a picture of all the solutions to an equation, right? And if you're graphing a line, say, for example, then that's going to come from a linear equation. Every point on the line is a solution. Any point not a line not on the line is not a solution. And one of the most powerful ways to make a graph is with a t-chart. It always works. If you know the shape of the equation, if you know the shape that that general equation would make, if you can find a few points, you can sketch that graph. And to find a few points, easiest way is with the t-chart. Hey, if this has been helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you got a question or a comment, leave it down below. I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe, it's free, why not? And then I will put a link in the description down below to my website, beardmathman.com, where you can read some notes and see some extra examples and practice problems on this topic. And you can get a printable copy of these practice problems and some extras. So that's at thebeardedmathman.com. I will leave a description. I will leave a link, sorry, in the description down below. I hope this video has been helpful. Once again, if it has, please give it a like, share it on social media. Hope you have a great day.